in their hundred years conflict, but has any stirred the emotions quite like this one? Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the ultimate old firm experience. Paul McStay has led his man onto the field, and uh, Richard Goff has led out the Rangers. And the Rangers' victory will give them a record equaling ninth championship with their rivals. A Celtic win will surely take it to the wire. It's the game Charlie Nicholas everyone wants to see. Yes, good afternoon, Jerry, and good afternoon to everyone. This game, I think, in a domestic presence, is probably the biggest game I can ever recall. With many marvellous memories of European nights here at Celtic Park. Today, in a domestic level, I've not often said that I miss a game now that I've stopped playing, but this is definitely one I would love to have played in. Fantastic atmosphere. The place jam-packed, and let's have a look at the teams once again. Celtic first of all, and the show is just the one change from the side which flopped at Kilmarnock with the Canio returning and Andreas Tom dropping to the bench. And now Rangers. Well, four changes have been made following defeat by Dundee United at Ibrox uh, with Dibble, Goff, Hatley and Durant replacing Gorham, Petrich, Jury and Villa. And there's Paolo Di Canio. Much Celtic hope resting on his shoulders this afternoon. The Celtic huddle takes place. And uh, Enrico Anone, who's arrived from AS Roma, makes his fourth appearance this afternoon. And a big day for Richard Goff, his last old for a match. He wants to end it with a victory. And the return of Mark Cately, who could have guessed this just a week ago. The referee this afternoon is Hugh Dallas from Motherwell. He will be assisted by John Fleming of Glasgow, John Michael Hinney of Glasgow, the fourth official is Will Young from Claxton. It's a rather windy day here in the east end of Glasgow. Let's hope it doesn't spoil the play, which is now underway. So right away, Rangers attempting to test the Celtic defence. Well, it's the west end of Celtic Park that uh, still lies fairly open during this rebuilding process. The wind is coming from that direction. It will make it... A bit difficult, I suspect, for the goalkeepers. I think it was mainly as a swirling one, Jerry, which we'll find it doesn't really benefit anyone in particular. It's always difficult to get control of the ball. But, you know, there's many big occasions to play in. I think this is an occasion for maybe even some homegrown talent. There's so much talk about the European guys, but that's Andy Dibble there. A massive game for him. And I expect his first 20 minutes, Celtic to try and go for the throw of Rangers. There's a touch for De Canio. It's O'Donnell. Test of nerve for Andy Dibble. Not the greatest clearance, but he gets away with it. It reached Alec Cleland. Well, the Rangers fans are hugely outnumbered this afternoon, but they're giving the team plenty of backing in these early stages. Well, Rangers have lost just one of the last nine league visits here, and they haven't conceded a goal in the last three. That's league games, so uh, a tremendous record here. Celtic's last Premier Division win over Rangers was almost two years ago in May 1995, 3-0 at Hampden Park. The championship was uh, over that day. This afternoon, it's up for grabs. This is Anoni. Just comes Bjorklund. Given away by Ian Durant, a seasoned campaigner. Rangers have it back, go through Ferguson, it's Durant again. Well, Ian Durant and Mark Hatley combined so well a few years back, uh, particularly in one Scottish Cup final, and perhaps Walter Smith has been looking back to that occasion as he reinstates Durant and brings Hatley back. Meanwhile, it's Cleland pushing forward here. And the assistant referee on the far side has raised his flag. The free kick has been awarded. Good positive run from Cleland. A little bit of tugging from both of them, but I think you're spot on with Durant. I think he's a big-time player, and I think this game 
is the reason why he's probably bought a Smith Rotten back. He knows he can play big time at this level, especially his combination with Hitler. Well, it's Durant to take it. Hitler is lurking just on the edge of the area. Richard Goff is up there as well. An early test for the goalkeeper, perhaps. But, uh, the ball drifts away. The Rangers are showing a lot of determination here. They're well wound up for the occasion. But, uh, so too is Paul McStay. Through now for the Canio. Cadet starts a run through the middle. Still it's the Canio. The Rangers are getting players back in numbers here. It's Cadet with Bjorklund. Lovely skills by Cadet in a very tight situation. That's just beyond Peter Grant. That was brilliant play by George Cadet. Good run forward by the Canio initially. Still Celtic have it. It's Jackie McNamara. Away by Bjorkland. McDonnell battles hard. Alberts is there. So too is Ferguson. Now it's Craig Moore. Lead off by Loudrop. Alberts. Looking for Haitley. And the challenge leaves Malky Mackay in trouble. Well, the first aerial ball, and uh, Heatley wins it, and uh, he gets a free kick after the challenge from Anoni. But psychologically, Heatley has let it be known he's there, and uh, Malky Mackay knew all about it. Well, it's a ploy we've seen so many times in the past, and it was an interesting confrontation for the first time there, and Heatley's come out and taught him that first one. Again, Charlie, you and I have uh, talked uh, so many occasions about... Uh, the experience you guys have yeah. had in all firm games and experience in this particular one is vital. Vital. He will work that back four on his own. They have, sorry, it'll mainly be a three for Celtic. Healy will work the back three in his own. He might run out of steam eventually because of his lack of games, but he's got the knowledge to pick places when he wants to run in his head in the aerial battles. So Albert sweeps it in. The goalkeeper commits himself. It's a comfortable catch for Stuart Kerr. He's had a good season with... 12 shutouts. In fact, uh, Tuesday's defeat at Kilmarnock ended a run of four consecutive shutouts for him. A touch from Alberts. Now it's Loudrop. Trying to charge his way through. He got away from McStay, first of all. Malky Mackay did just enough there. Now it breaks for Tosh McKinley. Away by McLaren. Ferguson. Good ball through from Loudrop. He's got Hitley with him. Clellan's away in a run as Moore takes possession. A stretch of a foot there, getting it away, only as far as Loudrop. Free kick is awarded. Well, the Celtic players are unhappy. Jackie McNamara particularly. Uh, Loudrop is showing a lot of determination, and uh, certainly that was a free kick. So another chance here for Rangers to test the goalkeeper. George Alberts, who scored a spectacular goal against Celtic at the turn of the year from just about this range. There's a man who's going to take it. Can he do it again? Well, great power, but the wall does its job, and it's De Canio. Well, De Canio does well against the odds. Nice no, McStay. O'Donnell started a run. Cadets on the far side. That's a free kick, and it's going to be a booking for Craig Moore. Well, Paolo De Canio did so well earlier on there, forcing the ball out of his own defence. Paul McStay was running through and uh, clearly tripped there. And uh, Hugh Dallas knows he's got to take some early action. And Craig Moore goes into the book. It's a promising break that for Celtic. O'Donnell was ahead of McStay. Cadet had made space on the left hand side and was on a run. Anoni sends it in. That's a powerful header right across the face of goal. Stubbs and Mackay up there. And Andy Dibble. Watch that one carefully. It's nicely flighted in. It's very rarely you would see somebody scoring from there, but with this win today, the swirling win, Stubbs got a good header on it. 
and you just never know you could catch somebody out. I think Dibble was always comfortable, to be fair. Well, Mackay and Stubbs coming in at the far post, and that will certainly be a tactic that Celtic will use this afternoon. That will set pieces. Rangers 2 with a real aerial threat. That's Hatley digging in. And the free kick was awarded against McStay. And the referee keeping right on top of things here. It's been an interesting start, Jerry. Sitting here looking at just over eight minutes gone. And Celtic really haven't dominated the way I might have thought the first 20 would normally go. Rangers are playing pretty confidently at this moment in time. Showing a lot of determination. There have been early goals in the last three old firm encounters. And the team that has uh, taken the lead has gone on to win. Uh, Loudrup, who hit the ball there, he scored in just uh, seven minutes in uh, one of the earlier matches. Alberts in nine, and uh, Mackay in the cup tie for Celtic in ten minutes. But, uh, both sides fully committed. Free kick goes Celtic's way. Good shielding there from Cadet, very strong upper body. Goff just putting too many hands on him. So Paul McStay with this free kick. The goalkeeper comes for it, takes it well. And it's a decent throw out, but. Uh, Celtic were alert, Loudrop was almost away there. Here's De Canio. Fallon gets a foot in. Now it's McStay. Again, De Canio twisting and turning. He's got the free kick. Conceded by Ian Ferguson. So an opportunity here for Celtic. Ferguson leaving his foot in. Certainly wasn't practiced in the training ground. A lapse of concentration there between the Canio and Grant. And Celtic have paid a penalty. Three Rangers players getting forward here. It's through for Ian Durant. Well, he snatched at that one. He had Cleland with him as well. What a chance that was for Rangers. It all started from a Celtic free kick at the other end. Slack play between the Canio and Grant. Let louder of away. He had Durant just ahead of him. Cleland wide right. And Durant coming in here, headed early. Well, I've got to give credit to Mike Namara. He delayed it and delayed it, and eventually he did enough to get back and put Durant off. But really, Celtic were badly exposed from midfield and defence there. Rangers are looking the likelier side in these early stages. You could certainly detect the determination about them pre-match as they were warming up on the pitch. enabled Dean Ferguson to sit a little bit deeper and maybe secure his back three but what they're getting is they're getting numbers and they're harassing Celtic's midfield a lot more than they did just last week a bit of hesitancy there between uh, Roberts and Bjorklund almost uh, like Peter Granton this is Moore Cleland Slight one by him, it's returned by Malky Mackay. And it drops in behind McLaren, but uh, Andy Dibble took control of the situation. 31 years of age, with great experience, won three full caps with Wales, three under 21 caps as well, and uh, he's played for a host of clubs down south. But I just wonder if he's ever been in an atmosphere quite like this. Probably not, I'd be surprised ever if he's witnessed anything like this. Again, it's Hately. Using all his knowledge, his know-how. As soon as you lift that arm, you'll get a free kick, and that's what Stubbs has done. So once again, Alberts is preparing to take the free kick. It's a long way out, this one. And 
the Celtic wall did its job last time. Once again, the lineup to protect the goalkeeper. Once again, the wall does its job. So George Alberts has a terrific scoring record from midfield this season. He started the season, in fact, at fullback in the margin set. Since then, he's managed to score 12 goals. Some fierce tackling going on there. And Peter Grant is now in trouble with the referee for that challenge on Ian Durant. And the referee will call the player back over, but uh, you see the ferocity of the challenge there. And the referee is uh, making his point to the Celtic player. I don't think Peter is always a guy who again, accepts his bookies gracefully, but I think he's just cleverly took him from the back, but Durant read the situation. So almost 14 minutes gone here at Celtic Park. Celtic nil, Rangers nil. And that's another free kick to Rangers. They're certainly causing the Celtic defence a lot of problems once again. It's Hitley who was pushed there. Malky Mackay, the culprit. Another opportunity for Rangers. They've definitely taken the game by the scruff of the neck in these early stages. Carried it to Celtic. Stuart Kerr screaming instructions on his defenders. Again, Alberts is there. Ian Ferguson is in close proximity. It's Alberts again. Well, that's three free kicks he's had. They've all come off the defensive wall. Stay plays it through now. Here comes Goff. Durant. Same towards Haitley. Mackay was struggling there a bit. And it's cleared by McNamara. He's just putting that down the Celtic defenders' mind, Haitley. They don't quite know whether to go and try and force the issue and get over the top of them. I just let him flick it on, and he's causing mayhem at the back at the moment. But Rangers have had a good spell. And they'll really want to take something from it. As we've seen so often in these old firm games, you can have the upper hand and suddenly something happens at the other end. Off the Canio to McStay. A bit of slackness again. Gives Rangers possession. Haitley's peeled away on the left hand side. Cleland has made a run on the right. Still it's Loudrup. Haitley is showing a lot of good movement off the ball here. Back to Loudrup and Noni gets a foot in. That was superb play though by Mark Haitley. His movement on the edge of the area gave the Celtic defence a lot of problems again. And he squeezed the ball back through to Loudrop. And it was the outstretched foot of Anone who got it away. Some words of encouragement and advice from Billy Stark. Tommy Burns, as we saw earlier, sitting up in the stand, serving a ban there. And that was because he was sent off uh, by this afternoon's referee, Hugh Dallas, in the previous Old Firm encounter. Here comes Celtic now. It's De Canio trying to force it through. McLaren gets a toe to it. Only as far as McStay, the offside flag goes up. Well, De Canio had stepped forward, and uh, so too had Cadet, and uh, the referee will have a word with him. So the referee has had a word. George Cadet who complained about the decision. Yeah, two skippers going for that one. That's McStay who won it. 
Here's De Canio. McDonald's in the middle, but De Canio is forced wide by a posse of Rangers players. He finds Tosh McKinley, the early ball from him, it's away by Goff. Get in there just ahead of Cadet. Good ball forward by Malky Mackay. Much better from Anoni. Who gets the touch to Durant. Tries to pick out Hatley. Mackay's there though. Touch on from McStay. Down from Cadet. Good ball from Peter Grant. This is Decanio. Celtic are getting players forward here. Phil O'Donnell's arriving as well. Cadets in the middle. Tosh McKinley's in support. And McKinley wants it, but Decanio is not prepared to part with possession. He's off the head of McNamara. Durant's back there defending. Free kick has been awarded. So now an opportunity for Celtic. Ian Durant going in there on McNamara. Almost 19 minutes gone. Rangers have enjoyed the wide share of pressure. But now Celtic have a chance here. Mackay's up there, so too is Stubbs, but it's a poor free kick from the Canio. The Celtic uh, set pieces while letting them down. With Rangers tending to break forward from them. But uh, on that occasion, Anoni got in there. I think we can see that about both teams so far. Alberts' free kicks have been disappointing. Good challenge from Anoni. Sizing up the situation, but Rangers have been disappointed at theirs too. You just wonder, it's so often in the past, Celtic dominated early proceedings, and then Rangers usually go and get a result. Like a death challenges once again, giant steep. Here's McNamara. Dispossessed there, and just got a cluster of players around him. Now it's Loudrop trying to open up the Celtic defence. Good ball through now for Alberts. Away to the far side, looking for Hitley. Right across goal by him, and onto the top of the net. And again, good movement by Mark Hitley. Perhaps if there'd been just enough support coming through from there, he could have knocked that one down. Loudrop fed it through. Good ball to Alberts. I know he had to back off there, and Hitley come in on the far side. That was a good break, good weighted cross. Maybe the wind has just caught a bit. You just see, he can't get the angle to knock it back because Craig Moore was just coming out to show it. But it was a good move from Rangers, playing very cleverly. And Loudrop picking up clever space now. Snap ball by Anoni. It's picked up by Cleland. Cleland shows good pace and determination. Craig Moore does likewise. The ball is just pushed too far ahead of him, though. Rangers have to settle for the throw-in. Well, this is a different Rangers from the team that came here in the Scottish Cup. There's the header going in, and uh, again, you've got to look at the Celtic defence there. Durant has uh, taken a bit of a knock, but uh, just look how he gets in. by Richard Goff. Pulling going on there, and uh, the free kick goes against Hatley. Involved with Anoni. Fires 
a long one forward. So we and McLaren. This is Ian Ferguson. Looking for Hitley. Alan Stubbs is on the ground. Alan Stubbs was hurt in that exchange with Hitley. And the referee will hold the play now and allow some treatment. But, uh, once again, Mark Hitley making his presence felt. His last game for Rangers was against Stirling Albion in the League Cup. And he scored in that match. Certainly done well this afternoon. So an anxious moment here for Celtic. It's mainly it's just a good fall for him, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very sore one. But uh, I don't think there was any real malice in the challenge from Hitler, it was just more of a clumsy fall. This obviously gave Stubbs a problem. But you know, there's two guys here talking loud in particular, I think, has maybe got the biggest boost of all in this Rangers team. He probably feels now he can get a bit more space, and Haley does take a considerable amount of weight off this guy's shoulders, and he can just go on and create his openings, and Haley can do a lot of the work for him. And even at 35, I don't think it looks a problem so far for Haley. Yeah, Loudrop did look a bit dispirited the other evening when uh, Pedersen once again mucked him extremely well, and... You're right, Charlie, he wasn't getting the support, but uh, this afternoon he's uh, relishing this situation. And, well, uh, Alan Stubbs doesn't look too happy, and the referee is saying, well, if he wants any further treatment, he's going to have to leave the field. from Cadet. Here's McStay. De Canio quickly closed down by McLaren. No free kick indicates the referee. Celtic players look for something. Rangers get on with it. Here comes Grant. Well, that's given away by Craig Moore. Here's De Canio. Moore tries to get back. There's certainly plenty of Rangers players funneling back. And the danger is eventually clear, but a slight moment there almost let De Canio in. Uh, cadet with him, but uh, trying to go it alone. There's Cadet trying to challenge. Now it's Alberts for Rangers. Ferguson. Durant. Fallon's away, wide right. Fallon plays it through, and it's a good ball. It finds Craig Moore. And it's away behind by Anoni. Well, Hitley was lucky in the middle, he decided to make a run to the near side. And the ball was hit right across. But uh, Rangers have the corner kick conceded by Enrico Enone. Once again, uh, Richard Goff pushes forward. That was a good ball through from Cleland to Craig Moore. Movement from Goff and Haitley. Right through for the throw in to Celtic. They certainly gave them problems, Rangers have given Celtic problems down the Rangers right hand side. That was done clever. But Craig Moore's been prepared to sacrifice his running and he's got in behind Tosh McKinley. He had to go and be, and probably block Clellan. And it's been difficult for Celtic to pick Craig Moore up. And, uh, free kick to Rangers, just on the edge of the area. And the referee is calling over Malky Mackay. It's another real opportunity here for Rangers, right on the edge of the area. And they've had a lot of free kicks in this first half. It's, uh, just over 27 minutes gone, they failed to cash in. For something from this one. Durant sweeps it in, and Hitley just failed to respond. This is Ferguson. 
Good challenge there by Jackie McNamara. Good out for Cadet. And uh, Nikolai, good challenge. Fighting challenge there by Bjorkland. There's a winner at the end of this match. They really deserve a point because the commitment is total. Well, this is the first time in 14 years that Rangers have gone into an old firm match on the back of two defeats. The last time was way back in 1983 when they lost 2-1 to Celtic at Ibrox. Tommy Burns getting one of the goals, so that shows you how long ago that happened. This is McNamara now trying to force a play forward. Well, Ian Durant is doing plenty of defending here. So it's McNamara and it's George Alberts who slides in to concede the corner kick. There's certainly persistence from Jackie McNamara. First of all, he was challenged by Ian Durant, then uh, George Alberts. to steady himself in a crowded area but uh, the referee wants us taken again a lot of pushing and jostling going on and uh, Hugh Dallas they're just calming things down there's already a yellow card with two players this afternoon Grant of Celtic and Moore of Rangers once again he shows some firmness so Tosh McKinley has crossed over to hit this one. Well headed away by Ferguson. So almost half an hour gone, still no scoring here at Celtic Park. So plenty of action. And here's Paul McStay, the Celtic skipper, through now for the Canio. Cadets just ahead of him, still it's Cadets! The goalkeeper does well, and Alan McLaren gets it away, but McLaren was really caught there. Alan McLaren was caught out by George Cadet as De Canio played this one through. It's a famous diagonal run of Cadet, but full credit to the keeper, Devil. He was out very sharp. Canio swings it in. And the free kick is awarded to Rangers. Again, a lot of pushing going on. Peter Grant has uh, taken a knock, but uh, it was good play by Cadet. Just getting away from McLaren. Ball through from the Canio. The goalkeeper does his job, and then McLaren managed to get it away. It's really the first time that Cadet and the Canio have linked and gave them a major problem. They have lacked sufficient numbers from midfield at the moment, Celtic, to support the Canio and Cadet in particular. O'Donnell's trying on every occasion to get there. But they've got to time it right until Cadet has got under control and from that Celtic can progress because at the moment they're just no fluency in the play. Challenges again. Way by Bjorkland. Headed forward by Stubbs. Way by Goff. That's Phil O'Donnell. Haven't really seen much of him so far. One of those good runs he can make. There's De Canio. Now it's O'Donnell. Through by Anoni. Drift out, I'm sure. Only Peter Grant, I think, would have chased it into that corner. It certainly wouldn't have been me. I love no money, I wouldn't have nailed that. But uh, the determination was shown again from Granty. It was a good ball actually played from Anoni, but he'd made his run early and checked out Peter Grant, so he just couldn't get back into it. Andy Dibble here. He's made five appearances for Aberdeen back in 1990. Came out for a spell on this afternoon. He's certainly doing that. All Rangers. Cadet with 
Bjorkland. Celtic throw. Touch from the Canio. Smack the Mara. Again, uh, Durant is keeping a close eye on him. Good challenge. He's getting through a power of luck this afternoon, Ian Durant. To think how long ago that horrendous injury happened to him. And still he defies the odds to play at the top level. Here's Peter Grant. Well, he does well. McNamara sends it in. It's away by Craig Moore. A touch from Haitley. Haitley again. Throw to Celtic. Peter Grant, off does well against Cadet. This is Moore, he's playing it into space, looking for a low drop. And Malcolm Mackay and Alan Stubbs seem to have settled a bit now. After some well, hair-raising moments in the earlier stages. Game's just settled down a little bit, it's just having a little breather, I think, before they have a final blast with the half time whistle. But uh, it's, a, it's a calm five minutes. Celtic maybe just starting to believe that they have steadied the ship a little bit. They just have been dominant in this first half. I think Stuart Claire Kerr has maybe only had one save to make, so they'll not be that, that upset at this day that Rangers have probably had more possession. So Grant battling with Haitley, it's Celtic's free kick. And uh, the referee wants a word with uh, Haitley. Again, two committed players. And uh, Haitley actually committing the foul. He gets a word of warning from the referee. Double O Sevens here this afternoon. Supporting Rangers by the look of things. Goalkeeper oh, we'll remain calm. Shows plenty of confidence. Touch on by Hitley. This is Stubbs. Good no ball lock, easily taken down by Bjorklund. Through for Hitley. Alberts. Looking for Durant, but stays there though. Durant. McNamara. Alberts does well. Against Cadet and almost a good ball through to Loudrop. It was well cut out there by Malky Mackay. Alec Clellan stands in no ceremony. With the Canio. The Kinley. Canio again. Driving it through. Behind for the goal kick. Just little flashes, he wants to do something. It was a horrendous ball for Cadet to contact with. There's just no way he could have done anything with it. I think it was mainly a shot from De Canio. Hasn't been so influential as normal today. Don't know if that's maybe down to his, his injury picked up last week. But uh, signs are that he's just still got something in the bag to give Celtic. Richard Goff, just the last few games, seems to be getting through this one without any great problem so far. And it's a free kick against Cadet. Again, it's very difficult down there for the referee. But, uh, he decides it's Rangers free kick and uh, Wendy Dibble. All the way out of his goal to take this one. Well, 
Paul McStay's lined it. This is McNamara. Cross now for Grant. First McKinley is wide left. O'Donnell has started a run. This is O'Donnell. Barron challenge as well. They get some help from Cleland. By Mackay, he's the cut out by Moore, and comes to Canio again. Make sure for Cadet. It's to Canio. Cadet peels off. But, uh, Richard Goff was there, and so too was Craig Moore. But Celtic really looking to De Canio and Cadet. Get some kind of combination going here to open up this defence, but uh, the Rangers skipper was there. by Cleland. That's a free kick. Celtic's way. It's De Canio. O'Donnell. Good touch by him. De Canio again. Now Ian Durant will be yellow carded. I just wonder what this uh, might do to De Canio, who'd been struggling with injury. He's still in the deck as uh, Hugh Dallas calls over the Rangers player. And a promising moment there for Celtic. It comes to an end, and the yellow card is shown to the Rangers midfielder. Inside the final five minutes of this first half here at Celtic Park. It's Celtic nil, Rangers nil, but a free kick to Celtic as Tommy Burns looks on. A free kick just outside the area. Well, certainly, Celtic fans are right behind the team now. And they weathered some early pressure. They have a chance here. What an intense battle this has been. It's De Canio! And the ball goes behind for the goal kick. What a magnificent effort by Paolo De Canio. The ball flicked up in the air for him. A mighty effort off the top of the bar. Well, if you believed yourself, this is what can happen. Absolute quality from De Canio. In the last five minutes, Celtic have needed someone to inspire them. And if this doesn't, nothing will. Tremendous ability from a quality player. Well, that certainly ignites the Celtic fans. He's become a major favourite here after a slow start. And the good thing is that uh, De Canio now is concentrating more on the game, he was getting far too involved with referees and officials in his uh, earlier weeks here. Got himself sent off, and uh, now he's concentrating more in the game, and that is paying off for Celtic. We're certainly coming more and more into this match after a rather dodgy start. So just under three minutes of the first half left. It's McStay, well challenged by Ferguson. Money comes in there, just ahead of Lauder. It's a little picture from Cleland. But, uh, McLaren and Durant get into a bit of a tangle and they surrender possession. Celtic now hesitate. It's a real pressure cooker down there, look. It's a fear of making a mistake in vital areas. Well, the offside flag is up. Canio will be spoken to 
Maybe I spoke just a bit too soon there. He shows his frustration. It was a long ball, it was played through. The offside flag went up. Uh, he reacted and uh, the referee ran over. I think the, the real frustration shown there was I think he actually timed his run well. And I think he's caught the linesman out. But uh, still, he overreacts. Again, it's that argument, Charlie. A ball being played that kind of distance. How can the linesman keep an eye on that? And uh, also the player who's breaking, it's very, very difficult. Comes off the head of Cadet, it's picked up by Durant. And again, he's back, helping out. And a miscue this time by Andy Double. hasn't looked all that comfortable and the ball has been passed back to him but he did make one very good close range save and through by Stubbs so the referee has halted the play and uh, it's Rangers ball Celtic would like to try and get their fullbacks more advanced. McNamara and McKinley, their, their big strength is going forward. They really haven't hit the byline probably as much as Celtic would like. Well, Ian Durant coming through, and the goalkeeper's off his line. Rangers sensationally take the lead. What a mess the Celtic defence get into there. Just seconds of this first half left. And Stuart Kerr got into all kinds of difficulty here. It was Alberts who swept the ball through. It was Hitley with Anori. He got the merest touch on it. And then Stubbs headed it into the path of Durant. The goalkeeper had already left his line. Malky Bakai had the chance to clear. Well, Celtic gave him every chance. Coming to half time. You don't take the gamble and try and knock it back to your goalkeeper there. He's in no man's land. Mackay's a bit slow to react it. Loudra puts him under pressure, and it's a terrible goal for Celtic to lose. So we're now into stoppage time in this first half. And Celtic have the free kick. But really, it was blunderland there from Celtic. A mistake by Stubbs initially. The goalkeeper had committed himself. Durant got it over. Malky Mackay tried to get it away. Only got a touch on it. It was over the line at that point. So on the ball. I suppose coming off Malky Mackay in the final analysis. The man who gave Celtic the lead in the Scottish Cup tie. But it was awful defending by Celtic. The first mistake coming from Stubbs. The goalkeeper, Stuart Kerr, had already left his line. And Ian Jeanette got the touch on it. Play held up for some treatment from Craig Moore. And Celtic were enjoying the best spell of the match, but caught out by the long ball through from Alberts. Celtic and hope to take this opportunity good blocking challenge by Richard Goff been flying out there against Stubbs and it's Ian Jeanette again back to doing some defending as the halftime whistle sounds Rangers get the vital breakthrough just a minute from halftime Charlie well, Rangers were playing so well, I thought, for 25, 30 minutes. Celtic, in mainstream through the can, over coming back into the game with the quality effort off the bar. But if Celtic can continually defend that against Rangers, they will go another eight or nine games until they get a result, because it was bad, bad defending, and there is no excuse for it. Half-time score here at Celtic Park.
is Celtic nil, Rangers one. Yeah, real drama there. Celtic nil, Rangers won after 45 minutes of frantic action. And we'll hear the thoughts of Paul Elliott and Graham Roberts in just a couple of minutes from now. Welcome back, half time here at Parkhead, where it's Celtic nil, Rangers one. And this is the story of the first 45 minutes. Have a look at this. Half time statistics. Well, Rangers have one goal, Celtic haven't scored, as we know. Shots on target, Rangers have had three, Celtic two. Shots off it. Two each there, corners, there only have been three, two to Celtic and one to Rangers. Well, Paul, briefly, what do you make of it so far? Well, I think, Jim, for the first 30 minutes, territorially, um, Rangers had the, the greater advantage. They broke with pace, and really, I think Haitley was a constant threat. The two centre-backs, I thought, struggled. And I think thereafter, um, you know, once Celtic settled, the Canyon started to have a bigger influence on the game. Obviously, they finished uh, the, the stronger side, but obviously, uh, Rangers scoring very much against a run of play. I think you go with that, Graham, yeah? Yeah, I do, Jim. I think um, Rangers come here to do a job. They've got everybody behind the ball. And Rangers' game at the moment is to hit them on the break. And they've got the pace in loud job. Haitley's causing stubs in Mulkey Mackay. All sorts of trouble. And they just cannot handle it. They're not used to him. Such a big lad playing against them this season. And uh, he's caused some mayhem in there. And uh, the goal came from that, that situation. Yeah, well, let, you mentioned the goal. Let's see the goal now, Graham. This is what is keeping Rangers ahead of Celtic right now. Now, what do you think of that, Paul? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, to be fair, prior to that, I think it was, uh, it was a woeful error actually by Stubbs. I think the last further the field there, you've got to get the height and distance away. I mean, the ball's coming. I think you see Big Mark, he actually pulls off onto the fullback, Anoni. Yeah. There, at that point, that's where he's created the problem. His presence there, unchallenged. And obviously there's Stubbs. Missed time the header, in my opinion. And really, Durant has read the situation, lifted it over the advancing curve, and really allowed to brave on the far post, comes in and, and Kerr bundles it into the net, but really... Um, it's a strange one, isn't it? Yes. But I, actually, I thought, if we have a look here, I thought Durant was going to score. Yes. And, uh, but Loudjop definitely touches it. Yeah, you've got the final touch, hasn't it? Yeah, well, that's 1-0 to Rangers at half-time, and that was the goal. Ian Durant, you said you were pleased at the, the top of the show, Graham, that Durant was in. He had a real chance early on, didn't he? Well, when, I thought he was going to put us one up. I thought he was going to put us one up, Jim. Um, it was a free kick. I think it was Celtic's free kick. And... Uh, Rangers game is about breaking off, you know, from other people's uh, mistakes. And you see there here, is, yeah. you know, it's a great ball. Loudrop's pace takes him away. And now it's sort of three against one. But to be fair to him, Tosh McKinley does very well there. Held him up and uh, I thought probably Loudrop should have just killed him off a bit more. And Dranty would have been right in on goal. And, uh, but Rangers look strong going forward. You know, on the break, they look tremendous today. And Hately in, as I said at the top, yes. you know, he comes up from, from London on Friday and he yes. plays against Celtic today. He had a, a looping header and went close with it, didn't he, Paul? Yeah, I mean, this is a, a, another element where he pulls off here to the far post. I think central defenders get caught balls and get caught towards a goal. Tight angle, but, um, you know, it's that kind of ball where Hately really just sits up in the air diagonally and he comes in there. I mean, he's like five yards off, poor marking by the Celtic defender. And really, you know, it's a good effort at goal. It was a good effort. Now, of course, Celtic have had their chances too, and we'll be looking at those in just a minute. But now details of how you can vote for the Bells. Thanks, Jim. Welcome back, everyone, to uh, Celtic Park. Both teams back out on the field, and a look around shows no changes in either side. And we checked with Rangers at half-time. Ian Durant is claiming the goal. Certainly, Loudrop was in there, and uh, Malky Mackay has the ball crossed the line, but uh, it's been credited to Ian Durant. Well, Celtic with a nut-hill battle in this second half. Rangers were certainly the better side over the 45 minutes. Cruel luck in Celtic, perhaps, when De Canio hit that marvellous free kick off the crossbar. But poor defending by Celtic, just on the interval. Gives them a lot to do in this second half to keep any championship hopes to have alive. So we're underway. And uh, Celtic unbeaten here in the last 10 matches since losing 1 0 to Rangers in November. Celtic have won nine of those and drawn the other. So we've got a formidable home record, but uh, being put to the test this afternoon. Certainly disappointing, I thought, midfield in the first half and uh, the service not being delivered through to De Canio and Cadet. And at the back, uh, Malky Mackay and Alan Stubbs they started the match rather nervously and uh, ended the first half that way after they appeared to have settled. And once again, Mark Caitley putting himself about and uh, he played a significant part in that first half. Just the 
can lay. So it'll set the looking more from uh, Phil O'Donnell in the second half. Daniel, down he goes. Free kick to Celtic. Yeah, I think you mentioned Phil O'Donnell, Jerry, and they do need more from him, but they've got to get the two wing backs, McKinley, McNamara, involved more in the play in an attacking role. Well, there's one of them. A touch there. For Peter Grant, it gets behind for the goal kick. It's played through by Jackie McNamara, but uh, all breaks down for Peter Grant. The Avengers suffered the first domestic defeat of the season at Ibrox on Wednesday night. They have to leave here today with four points, and they know they have more or less wrapped up this championship. A marked improvement in uh, Celtic's performance in the second half. Have to take anything out of the match. There's Anoni. McNamara. Taking on Alberts. And again, you see Rangers players closing in quickly. Durant and Ferguson. Three players clustered, uh, clustered around uh, Jackie McNamara there. And Rangers. Definitely look more up for this match than Celtic as things stand. Well, there's a desire and there's also a knowledge. I mean, Alberts is not the most confident fullback tackling wise, as we know. So McNamara is vital to Celtic. But both Durant and Ferguson willing to go and help him at every opportunity. There's McNamara again. Ferguson makes a challenge. Well, he's already spoken to in the first half. He'll have to be careful. With that one, free kick to Celtic. He's <laughs> away by Moore. He's been very alert, devil coming off his line. I mean, we know Andy Gorham is an extraordinary goalkeeper, but this guy seems to come off his line a lot more than Andy Gorham does. Foot two, slightly bigger, and uh, we certainly enjoyed the experience of playing in this so far this afternoon. As I mentioned, uh, Dibble played for a number of clubs, including West Brom and Bolton, and uh, signed from Manchester City. Who would have thought that Rangers would be drafting in Andy Dibble from Manchester City and Mark Hatley from QPR for a game such as this? It's uh, a sign of changing times uh, with so many foreign players involved that uh, five, no fewer than five, have scored in uh, recent Old Firm encounters. And there's Loudrup laying it off to Moore. Touch from Clellan to Durant. And steps next day. De Canio. Once again, you can see Rangers players reacting very quickly. There were three players around De Canio the minute they got possession. The ball had hardly left the Paul McStay's foot towards the Italian. And he was quickly closed down. Free kick is awarded. McLaren is the culprit. And they certainly won Celtic a fair number of uh, free kicks this afternoon, Paolo de Canio. But uh, once again, they fail to cash in, and Rangers are pushing forward. Albert's trying to pick out loud drop. Oh, it's a mistake now by Anoni. Defensively, Celtic are not having a good afternoon. They could be punished again. The goalkeeper's committed himself. Loudrup still has it. Well, once again, Kerr comes springing from his line just as he did when the goal was lost a minute from half time, and uh, the goalkeeper has been hurt. A mistake by Anoni in the first place. Let Loudrup through, and uh, certainly Stuart Kerr has uh, taken a knock. And, uh, Celtic have elected. Of uh, three outfield players on the bench this afternoon. Rangers have got Michael Ray, the young goalkeeper, on the bench. But, uh, the goalkeeper and flying out, went down and did just enough. But now it's Celtic at the other end, the early ball from Cadet. Here's O'Donnell, but uh, Rangers again have got superior numbers back. And the goal. 
goalkeeper takes it well despite the attentions of George Cadet. But once again, Rangers.